I just feel like it's time and when I do finish my WNBA seasons I, I am pretty exhausted and I find it hard to, to get going again when I come back and you know I don't have any time to, to readjust and uh, it's, it's been a struggle this year so uh, mentally and physically um, I just know it's the right time to, to say goodbye to the WNBL. You're 35 years old now. How long will you keep playing professionally then? Well, I, I have one more year with Indiana under contract and I'm still hoping that I can do another one beyond that. Um, physically, if I do give myself a break um, during the seasons, I think I'm still doing pretty good for 35 and, uh, you know, if I just look after myself, then I'm good to go for another one after, after this year. So we won't see you playing for the Capitals after this season, but can you imagine being involved with the Cats next year? I think, I mean, for sure there's an opportunity. Um, I haven't spoken to the club yet about the possibility of, uh, of being involved, whether it's um, some kind of coaching or administration, I'm not too sure. I haven't really thought about what exactly I'll be doing in the off-season, but uh, I'll, I'll definitely be getting some golf in, that's, that's a certainty. <laughs> when the truth is Savalakwa finishes her career in the WNBL, having played 262 games at an average of 7.6 points, 4 assists and 3 steals. Since debuting with Perth in 1991, she has won 3 championships, with Perth in her second year and with her adopted Canberra in 0506 and 0607. She finishes her career with more than 700 steals, the most ever in the WNBL. Tenacious, energetic, disruptive, courageous, fearless, just some of the words they used to describe you fairly regularly. They and a, missed a pain in the bum as well, I think. Is that, is that yeah. what's been with? They say quite a bit about your character, as does a few of the decisions you've made in your professional basketball career. You were never drafted to the WNBA, always worked as a free agent. It's not the usual way that Australian basketballers find themselves overseas though. Well, I guess at the time I really didn't have any other choice. Um, you know, I didn't get put into the draft, so you know, I wasn't a standout in terms of being selected that way. It was probably pure luck really that I did get my first gig in the WNBA. My agent just happened to be sending my tapes off um, and the Cleveland Rockers had some injury problems at the time and it was right place at the right time and they gave me a call and within about 12 hours of, of receiving that call I was on the plane to, to Cleveland so it was a pretty ridiculous story really that got me there but um, it was an amazing experience but uh, it wasn't, it was short lived. I, uh, I actually got cut halfway through the season and uh, I was left a little bit disillusioned by the WNBA you know my first time around but um, as I said it was a bit of luck really. But you kept at it? I did. Relentless persistence as Coach Graff uses a lot in, uh, in her pre-game talks but I mean I love the game and, and that's what kept me going. It's an interesting um, part of your character. You didn't go through the traditional AIS system as well and I think you're the only player ever to have represented Australia or been an Opal squad member not to go through that system. That's right. I mean, I think, you know, again, I've, just, I've pretty much been a late bloomer and um, it's just taken, you know, I've had to do it the long way around and, uh, you know, I'm pretty proud of the fact that I have achieved what I have with, without, you know, that extra assistance and that extra coaching. But, um, you know, it's with the great support of my family and, and friends that believed in me that, um, you know, they kept kept pushing me to keep going and gave me that self-belief that yes I could make it. Were there times during your career though when you thought well I'm never going to make the Opals? You didn't make the Opals until you were 34. True. Um, well it, it was funny because when I was younger my you know all-time dream was just to make the, the Perth Breakers so to even think that I'd one day be representing Australia that didn't come till later on you know it was all just about the Breakers and and you know I thought I'd made a big when I finally did crack it into into that team but it wasn't until later on as I started getting you know roles in the WNBA and and was good at the role that I was given that I thought well maybe I could you know push myself a little bit more and and find a role within that Australian team and as you said it's taken me a long time and uh, everything's happening towards the end of my career but um, you know some things sometimes good things come to those who wait. What are you going to miss about playing in the WNBA? 
it's you know it's that camaraderie that you have with your teammates um, you know I've been I've been very fortunate that in, in pretty much well, I guess I think in nearly all my teams I've, I've just had great people uh, and great chemistry with, with pretty much most of my teammates and I mean when you go on road trips you know there's always funny stories and uh, and you only can really understand and appreciate it when you're there and I think you know once I've finished and I'll you know hear the stories about what goes on when I'm not there it, it won't feel the same and I'll probably uh, you know that's when I'll, I'll really miss it I think because you know I just have I'm not really feeling it but um, it's it's already starting to affect me now a little bit realizing that well yes this is to, coming towards the end um, I played my last game in Perth um, not long ago and uh, you know thanking my family and friends and, and everyone involved with basketball WA um, it was quite emotional so it's uh, it's going to be hard come that last game